and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. <laughs> and today on the show, uh, it's all about visual composition of pictures. <laughs> yeah, the composition at the beginning wasn't so good. You didn't like that? Yeah, it's, it's not so much about framing, it's more about shooting. Yeah. Like okay. how you set up oh. the exposure and, uh, and your space speed of your shot. Got it. Okay, so you're going to talk about digital SLRs? I'm going to talk about digital SLRs and regular cameras that have the mode dial. So, you know, you mean the, all the all the hieroglyphics on this you can explain that stuff? Yep, yeah, more or less. <laughs> not not all of them, but you know, there, there's uh, the ones uh, that matter. The ones that matter that allow you to go more into manual modes. Very cool. Okay. All right, so what we're going to call this episode? What's the title of this episode? Exposure. Exposure. Oh yeah. no, you want to go there. All right, well, <laughs> Uh, Just as long as Biff doesn't expose himself again. Let's take a break, and when we come back from commercial, hieroglyphic demystification on your camera. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Okay, after this. If a doggy was the new Camtasia Studio 5, it would be the cutest. It would be obedient, and it wouldn't steal Aunt Betsy's purse. The new Camtasia Studio 5. Screencasting software that's better than a doggy. Download it at www.techsmith.com. So I'm really excited about this because I gotta say that I am not a photography expert. I'm a mm -hmm. kind of a point and shoot kind of guy. So the whole idea of this like F start, F stop, you know, thing on the <laughs> dial thingy, it's really exciting to me. Is it really? No, it is. It is because you know my whole family. They're all big photographers. My mm -hmm. brothers love this stuff, and I'm going like, hey. mm -hmm. well, for people that are all they want to do is like grab a camera and just go shoot some stuff, point and shoot. Generally. Generally, you don't have to worry about it, but if you've got a digital SLR and you're trying to figure out these manual settings, or you have one of these higher-end uh, point-and-shoot cameras mm -hmm. that have those manual settings on them, then you know we, we just want to explain a little bit about what those actually mean and how they'll affect the picture that you get. Okay, so back up a bit for a second, because mm -hmm. you said SLR. What's an SLR? SLR is one of these. It's a single lens reflex camera. Okay. Now, these are the ones that uh, you can actually take the lenses off. It's got a mirror inside mm -hmm. that uh, flips up and allows you to actually see what you're shooting through the viewfinder. Okay. But it'll flip up and actually take the shot when you're ready to take the shot. So an SLR existed when there was film, I guess. Right. Right, because it's just a matter of the, it's the, it's the mirror inside moving. Yes. Right. Uh, and so now digital SLR just means that instead of that film there, there's a digital sensor of some sort. Precisely. Right. Okay, good. And so, you just, so this will apply to traditional photography people? Yes. So old technology as well as the new technology? Yeah, so if you've got an old school film based uh, camera, it, it will it indeed apply to that as well. Great. You just All won't right. be able to see it on the screen uh, so quickly. Ah, very good. Okay, well let's, uh, let's, let's get into this. Let's All start. right, well the, the first thing is uh, the mode dial. And uh, typically on a mode dial like this, this one is a little bit different from a lot of the other ones you'll see. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see four letters on there, M, S, A, and P. M, S, A, P. Yeah, and this one is a bit different. This one is M, P, A, V, and T, V. Mm, okay. uh, which is a little bit confusing, but uh, I'll explain what that means. M, SAP? M, SAP. Mm -hmm. so, P is where you might want to start if you're just new to this whole world of uh, digital SLR. It stands for program mode, and what it means essentially is the camera will take care of most of the job of exposing your shot, making sure that everything looks properly. It's the Andy Walker setting. The Andy Walker yeah, setting. Like, I don't know how to do this. Mm. Right. So just a little bit of background first of all. So, so P is program, mm -hmm. A is aperture, and mm -hmm. I'll explain what that means in a second. S is shutter. And I'll mm -hmm. explain what that means. And look, you, you can know. M is manual? You got it. <sighs> All right, so, so we've got four different modes on this. Sometimes there's, there's more, and sometimes there's slightly different ones. But in general, program is the one that the camera will take care of most of the settings and allow you to apply certain tweaks. It's like, kind of like automatic-ish. 
Right. Okay. So most of these new cameras will give you scene modes and like complete automatic shots. You don't have to think about a single thing. Oh, so like sports mode, yeah. you know, macro mode. Yeah, and there's, there's a couple of those on this one as well. Um, but there's also ones that if you go into full automatic, it'll determine when you need to use the flash. Mm. When you're in program mode, you don't even have to think about that. Mm -hmm. or it, it, it won't think about that. You can determine whether or not it'll flash or not. You can change your ISO setting, which we'll explain later on. That's uh, how sensitive the, uh, the, the sensor is. Uh, so P will basically take care of everything except the things you choose to tweak. P for piece of cake. Piece of cake. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Aperture is, uh, will explain how wide open the, uh, the lens is. Let's see if we can get a look at this. Um, so if you look through the lens right here, you can actually see right through it. And the aperture is the setting that opens it up wider mm -hmm. or closes it down. Well, is that to allow like, the amount of light? It allows more light in uh -huh. to, to the lens. Expo expose. I'm not sure whether this is any better. But uh, it'll, it'll expose it differently depending on how much, how much light is allowed to get in to the, the lens itself. Okay. So that, that's your aperture. Just there, in old school ones, it would have fins that would come down. And I believe it's the same in these ones as well. Okay. So that's that. S stands for shutter. Uh -huh. And what the shutter is, is on the back of here, there's a little thing that opens up when you flip up the, uh, the mirror. Uh, a little section here will expose the CCD for a certain amount of time. Or the film. Or the film in an old school camera. Mm -hmm. So what uh, the S setting does is determines how long that will be open. So again, the longer you open it up, the more light will hit the, mm -hmm. the sensor. The shorter it is, the less light will hit it. Mm -hmm. But it, there, there's a couple other subtleties to that as well. You'd think more light, less light, aperture and shutter do the same thing. Yeah. Not quite. No? Not quite. So we'll get into now why you'd want to change one or the other. Yeah. So immediately with the shutter priority mode, the effect that most people will be familiar with is long, you know, long exposures. exposures yeah. So what you can do is you can actually freeze the action or show a bit of action in mm -hmm. this. So right now we've got a picture of some water running down a surface here, a little bit of a waterfall. Okay. And right now you can see it. this is at one four thousandth of a second. That's very fast. So that, that, that time rating is a shutter speed. Right. right? Okay. That time rating is the shutter speed, and the second one, F, is yeah. the aperture. They, they measure that in F-stops. So, and the, the lower that number, mm -hmm. uh, the wider open it is. The wider so, open the shutter is. The wider open the shutter is. Okay. So what, uh, what uh, shutter priority mode, the S setting on this will do, is it'll allow you to specify, what's my shutter speed going to be? Uh -huh. Do I want it at 1 4,000th? And uh, what the camera will do then is it'll change your aperture to compensate. Right. Aperture priority is the opposite. You set, say, how wide the aperture is going to be, and it'll adjust the shutter speed to compensate. Mm -hmm. So we'll show you the, the effects of shutter speed here. Uh, right now, we've got uh, the, the speed really quick to freeze the action. Okay. And as we uh, pan over here... So we're slowing down the shutter speed now. We we're, not... we're holding it open for longer, oh. okay. basically. Right. And what you can see, the F ranking on the side is starting to go down. So as, as you're leaving the shutter open longer, mm -hmm. it's closing up the, the, the aperture to keep the light level at roughly the same, so you're not getting nothing but white. If you leave it open too long, all you'll see is white. Okay. If you don't open it long enough, all you'll see is black. So it wants to create that happy balance, so you're seeing what we will see in real life. Mm -hmm. So as, as we slide over to the other side here, you'll notice that the water becomes less distinct. And uh, when we get over to the far side, we're getting closer to one second exposure now. You're seeing that basically we have running streams. So you can either freeze the action mm. or you can show motion, Ooh. depending on, on what uh, you choose for that setting. Cool. Now, the, the downside with the shutter priority mode uh, is in, in the daytime, if you make it too long, like try to make it five seconds, all you'll get is white no matter what. There's nothing that your lens can do to compensate aperture-wise for that. So you'll have to find that happy medium. And the great thing about digital versus film is you can play around with that to see what you're getting. With film, you'll waste, waste a, lot of, uh, a lot of film playing with that. Okay. So anyways, that's, that's what, why you'd want to change your shutter. Okay. We're going to show you why you'd want to change your aperture now. It's not as clear why you'd want to to, to most people. Okay. Now, back in the early, early days of photography, when, uh, when they didn't have all the variety of lenses that we have. Now there was, uh, someone got the bright idea, well let's try pinhole photography. Right. And uh, what that does is it, you just have a little pin prick and, and it creates a lensing effect. You don't actually have to have glass, all you need is a hole 
in a sheet of some dark material, mm -hmm. and it'll lens it. Now, the, the thing about getting down to a really tiny pinprick is it puts everything into focus. So uh, it's something called depth of field. When you uh, focus on something, you're basically changing your focus point. So either this is in focus, you're in focus, that camera, you know, something ahead of us is in focus, mm -hmm. and you can actually see things blur as you take them this way or blur as you take well, them you that way. Well, you can even way. think about it when you use your eyes, right? I mean, you, mm -hmm. you can actually, I'm in focus on my hand here, and everything, mm -hmm. as I look at that, everything behind it is blurry. Exactly. And if I shift the fo my focus of my eye now to the camera now, mm -hmm. Now the camera's in focus, but my hand is actually blurry, mm -hmm. right, if we do that. Yeah, so what happens is as you narrow down those lenses, yeah. uh, the apertures in them, everything will become more and more in focus. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, changing your aperture is actually a trick that photographers can use mm -hmm. to uh, change what exactly is the focal point of a scene. So in this one, we've, we've got the, uh, thing wide open right now. What's open? The, the, the aperture is wide open. The aperture open. is wide open. Right, so it's okay. at f3.5 and that's wide open for the lens I was using. Now you can get lenses that go even more wide open uh -huh. uh, to f1.4 for something. You start paying more for, for ones that let in more light like that okay. and, and open up the the aperture that much more. Right. Um, but typically you're going to be looking at f2.8, f3.5, or something around there for so most of the So this is a lens rating, specifically? This is, yeah. this is a lens rating, and you can actually see this on the lens itself. And I don't know if you can see that, Matt. Most lenses <laughs> will have a ranking on here. You've got the, the focal range, 28 to 300, so that'll be your zoom ratio. And But then right after that, it's got 1 to 3.5, and to 6.3. So that'll essentially tell you what your aperture settings will be at this range and that range. So at 28 millimeters, which is zoomed all the way out so you can see the whole scene, you'll have an f3.5. Uh -huh. Now this might be getting a little bit technical, but basically it's uh -huh. saying when you're zoomed out, you'll get more light in. When you're zoomed right in on something, yeah. um, you'll get less light into the barrel okay. of the camera. So, right. so now just to show what that actually does, when you, uh, when you adjust your aperture setting, so you'll notice in this shot right now, we've got the bears in the foreground, pretty yeah. much in focus. Uh, yeah. And everything behind it is out of focus. Yeah. So as we start moving this, it's, it's actually kind of gradual, so you're not really going to see much of a difference as we move up here. But the, the most dramatic way to do this is just to go from this side all the way to this side. You'll notice now that pretty much everything in this shot is in focus. Yeah, I guess so. More so. The background's more Way in more focus. so. I mean, you'll yeah. still see some difference, but, yeah. uh, but if you compare this... Yeah to that. Yeah, right. You'll, you'll definitely... Oh, sharp, much more sharper in the background it's, now. It's much sharper in the background right. when you... Uh, and that's an effect of your aperture. That's an effect of your aperture. So as you narrow the aperture down, yeah. more of the background will become in focus. In focus, okay. All right. So the, the trick that you can do is if you're, um, if you're shooting in program mode and it's determining that for you and you're not getting focus on this, if you want to blur this out, for example, what you would do then is you would crank your aperture wide open mm -hmm. and then uh, things on either side will go out of focus. Mm -hmm. Or if you want everything to be in focus, you want a landscape scene, you want you in the scene with everything in the background also in focus as well, right. then that's one way to accomplish that. Uh, right. Just okay. crank it down. Cool, okay. So that's aperture and that's shutter. And then what else? Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention on this is uh, m manual mode, essentially, if you know how to control both of these things. Manual still scares me, i got to admit, uh -huh. uh, because you're choosing the settings for both the shutter and the aperture. You know what manual so, means to me? Get out the book and look at it. Yes. And you, you could look at the manual for this and still not know how oh, manual man. mode is going to affect your shots unless you just go and play with it for a long time. But if you're getting an effect on this using aperture, priority or shutter priority that's not quite what you're looking for, like it's too bright or it's too dark, mm -hmm. then you can look at the settings you're getting with that shot and then go into manual mode and replicate it, but just tweak one, one way or the other to, to change that. I mean, for, for someone who really wants to learn photography inside and out, you'll want to go into manual mode and really play with that. But in general, you don't have to. It's like a lot of knob twiddling as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. Now, one other thing I wanted to, to explain as well, I mentioned it off the top, We'll show this to Sorry. show this to Matt as well. We've got this setting on the back called ISO. Yeah, what is that? ISO. ISO stands ISO. for International Standards Organization. Right. And it's just true. Sure on the side of buildings, ISO nine thousand and one. We're certified. Now, you know what? It's the same from the same thing. But ISO, in terms of cameras, uh, what it's shorthand for is the sensitivity of 
your sensor in here or the sensitivity the of your film. Yeah, because you so, need like ISO 400 on the film or 200 or whatever it is, right? Right. Now, there was another uh, another way that you or could ASA. refer to it. Was ASA. ASA. It was ASA. Same thing? It was the same thing, more or less. More or less. So um, in terms of sensitivity on the, the sensor on this camera right here, when you have a lower number for ISO, it's less sensitive. Now there's positives and negatives to that. Now a lot of new cameras are coming out with higher ISO ratings. So up until a couple of years ago, it went up to about 400 comfortably. Then it went to 800, then 1600. Now you have some cameras that go up to 3200 ISO, which means you can shoot nearly in the dark with these things. Mm -hmm. Very good if you want to shoot something in really low light. You're outside. There's not really a lot of ambient light, right. and you still want to capture something. Mm -hmm. But it comes at a cost, mm -hmm. which is which is noise in the picture. Noise. What's the, what do you mean? Like, like yeah, artifacts? Speckles. So speckles? If, you, if you zoom in, and I'll show a, an example of it right here. If you're looking at a regular camera, or a regular shot that's shot at something like 100 ISO, which would be comfortable ISO for outside, mm -hmm. it should be fairly crisp, and the details should be very nice. Mm -hmm. When you're going into something that's higher up, you're introducing more noise into it as the camera takes in more information. It just becomes more sensitive, and unfortunately that means it's getting some information that may not be exactly what you want to see. And as you crank it up to something like ISO 3200, you might have a blank scene, but as you zoom in, you'll see lots of little dots of red and green. And you may have seen this in some digital camera shots that you've already taken. So yeah, if, pretty if, much all of them. Yeah. If you're, wondering, if you're wondering why your camera has a lot of noise, it could be the ISO setting. You might try tweaking that down to something else, but then you might lose the ability to see what's in the shot. Now, the way this affects your shot in, in regular life is um, um, ISO can be cranked up to a higher setting automatically by a camera for digital image stabilization. Mm. So what happens is when you're moving really quickly to follow something, um, you might end up with a blur. By cranking up the, uh, the sensitivity of the sensor, it allows it to get that shot much more quickly mm -hmm. at the expense of some noise in the image. Right. So. That. Some cameras will crank that up automatically. You can crank it up to achieve the same effect if you're doing it manually as well. Okay, this is hurting my head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think I'm going to have to watch this episode again nine times to get it. But mm -hmm. So if, if you're in that place right now mm -hmm. where you're like, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are following along. This is mm -hmm. super valuable information. Mm -hmm. If you really want to get a handle on this, how, where would you start as a beginner? If you're like, yeah, I really want to get into this, so would you just play with the aperture and the shutter first? Or what would you do? Practice, practice, practice. Right. You, you really got to go through this. I, I think start on program mode to, to generally know how the camera's working. Play with, uh, with your flash and your ISO settings a little bit to, to see how you can get shots without having to fire the flash. Right. I mean, that, that's one key reason why you'd want to change your ISO. Well, the beautiful thing, I guess, about digital now is you can shoot lots of frames. Exactly. Play with all those settings, right? Go, oh, look, this is the shutter closed, this is the shutter open, mm -hmm. this is ISO that's up and down and whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? And just really get a sense of that. And, and I suppose there's no replicating experience, right? Right. I mean, in, in the past where you were going to waste a whole lot of film, then, yeah, you'd probably want to read a manual and really get it into your head before you started wasting that much right. film. Now it, there's no cost to this. Just keep at it. See how it affects your shot just by changing the settings and playing with it. Or if you're like me, just go get a point-and-shoot camera and deal yeah. with the consequences. That's one way to deal with it, too. All right, there you go. All right, well, thank you, Sean. That was great. It was fantastic. I now understand more about the camera. Well, a little bit more anyway. A little bit? A little bit. Super. Okay, good. All right, well, let's take a break. And when we come back, pictures? Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> All right. That's after this. So there you have it, uh, all those little numerator things on numerical things and stuff like that. Yeah. Now you know you can be an expert just with one episode of Lab Rats. Just with one. I know it was a bit dense, so you know, feel free to go back and watch it again. Uh, we'll see if we can uh, put into the show notes some of the resources online that will mm -hmm. help as well. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll, we'll have already flashed some captions on that. It takes a lot of uh, experience going up, but again, as you said, just get out there with your camera and, and try it. It's a bit dense like me. Oh, oh, what's my ISO setting now? Zero. 
<laughs> All right, speaking of pictures, these people use their ISO and their shutter speeds to capture these fabulous pictures of their people themselves and their cats and all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure if uh, they set these manually or they just let the cameras do this all automatically. FIFA program mode. It doesn't really matter. So, right. starting out, whoops, we'll back up. We have John and his hat. And he's blurry. And he's a little bit blurry because it was need, a very small image. You need to change the aperture setting, John, on your camera. Actually, I think what John needs to do is, oh, am I really going to be this nerdy? Yes. So a little bit of, uh, crank up that ISO a little bit, and uh, you know, this movement of John as he's putting on his hat really quickly while the picture takes or gets snapped. Mm, he might need He'll, a new, new hat, too. That might help. I kind of like that hat. It's kind yeah. of like the hat you'd wear when you're riding the rails or something. <laughs> See, oops. See, a hat like this. Boston Bruins, man! Red Sox, like idiot. Red Sox. Oh, Red it's Sox. that other Sorry. Boston team. All right, anyways, thank you, John, for sending that in. Thank you. Now to this one we actually have. This is from Alexander and his wife, Abby. Oh, and they're a handsome couple. In Hollywood. Really? And he's, cool. a, he's an editor in this Hollywood. This guy is in, yeah, he's in the film business, right? He's in the film business, yeah. and he edits, and he, he finds us useful, despite the fact that he's a pro. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Maybe he's not going to find this episode so useful, because he probably knows all this stuff he already. Does. Exactly. Um, but uh, he also said that he wanted to be absolutely sure that he sent a picture of him, because everyone else sends a picture of their cat. See, the, you are the poser child. You, thank you so much for the picture. It's in focus. There's good f-stops. The ISO is perfect. And we know your name, your wife's name. That's right. We yeah. know where you're from, okay. what you do. Right. Does he have cats? I don't know that. I don't know that, but that's okay. That's just a bonus. All right. Good. <laughs> Fabulous. Next. Another blurry one, oddly. Mm. You need to adjust the shutter speed here to four tenths <laughs> of a at, millimeter. Look, he, he learned so much from this episode. Unfortunately, it was the wrong stuff. <laughs> uh, this is Tony, and he's in Sydney in Australia. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Tony, in Sydney, Australia. Mm. Um, and that's, that's the one thing we didn't get into here is manual focus versus autofocus. And we, we've covered that before in the past in our SLR episode. So go back to that one and you can mm. find out why you'd want to, to do one or the other. How's that hat holding up? It's pretty good. I'm just hoping that Matt doesn't have fleas. He might, a little bit. You know those How's Boston fans. Very smart. Your IQ just went up 20 points. <laughs> so he's at 21 now. <laughs> So this one right here is uh, the rig from Leon in the UK. And now uh, Leon's not here, unless Leon's in one of these shots over here, perhaps. Um, but he's showing off uh, his setup with his computer and how he watches Lab Rats on this big Leon. monitor. Leon. And it awesome. looks like he's got some games over here. He's got, is this a signed Lincoln Park thing? Matt, are you into that? Rock on, boys, rock on. All right. It looks like an all, uh, an all access pass here to something or other as well. And lab rats. And lab rats on the screen. That's the important bit. It's the biggest thing in this picture. The focal point. Don't I look handsome in that picture? I do, I do, don't, don't I? I'm a handsome man. I can't help Looks it. like you're showing off some cat crack there, too. <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, it's Mo. Mo had to take off before we could uh, show this. Mo yes. was here uh, earlier during our shoot, but... Yes. Like Sorry, Mo. You know, you've got a fan here. There you go. You've got to stick around. All right, so make sure... So I guess that's it. Are we done? We're done. Where's more pictures? Uh, more pictures later on. Later on. Okay, there you go. So don't forget to set your ISO and your shutter and your aperture, right? And something about the film grainy, artifacty things. Yeah, set your film grain. <laughs> right. Set your film and your grain. artifacts. Set, make That's sure you right. set your artifacts really right. high. Right. And if you're gonna nerd out with your camera, don't send the email to me. Send it to him because I don't know what's going on here. Sean at labrats.tv. There you go. And I'm Andy at labrats.tv. If you want to complain about me, because clearly most people do. Any All Boston right. fans that want to. Uh, admit to a new crush on him now that he's wearing this hat? <laughs> See? Yeah. Boston Red Sox. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I really can't. Anyway. Do you even know who the Red Sox are? I have no idea. Name one player. Bob Smith. <laughs> no? Hey, he's at like a fourth base, isn't he? <laughs> fourth base, yeah. All right, well, enough of the sports talk and the photo talk and everything like that, because we've, we've run out of film and ISO and aperture settings here, so, <laughs> so that's it for us. Uh, don't forget to visit our website at labrats.tv. I think we ran out of viewers there, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can send us an email by emailing... Feedback at labrats.tv. Send us your pictures, of course, with yes. the correct settings. Uh, and that's it. That is it. So, on behalf of Lab Rats, thanks for downloading this week. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. We'll see you later.
Go Sox! Are you ready? Oh, hang on a second. I just want to see you. All right. Try that again? See what happens. You're covered in biff hair again. Is that, is that what you're choking on? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Got some more? <coughs> no, I just drink some cold coffee. Mm. Coffee solves all problems. Except attitude problems. Yeah, it could give you more attitude if you get too much coffee in you. That's true. All right. I have to switch alcohol soon. We don't have any. Alcohol. <laughs>